And welcome to another off-season edition of Spits and Suds. I'm Gavin Spittle of 1053 The Fan, joined by EP Rinkside. you got to love his sub stack. It's terrific, especially on days like today. It's Shap Shots. It's at Sean Shapiro. Back from the Stanley Cup where he was last night. Wanted to pop on because we are the off-season program of record. It's Spits and Suds. How are you, Sean? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm uh, I'm running on fumes right now. I had an early flight home from Florida this morning, and uh, we got we still have at least one more Cup final game left. And uh, but today, uh, <laughs> so much so much for us having a busy, uh, quiet day today. The, the the NHL decided the NHL GMs decided to unofficially launch the off season today, right? So yeah. here we are. <laughs> no, you're you're absolutely right. I did want to mention and I don't know if they were talking about it in the press box, but that Matthew Kachuk play at the end of the game will be forgotten. But to me, it was just truly magical to do the dive and then angle the stick in a way. I just thought it was pretty. It was the I mean the issue is McDavid scores right after, and then yep. what is what is Oliver Ekman Larson doing there? Like that's the other part of it, where it's like, yeah, like he makes that play, he makes that play, and then his his teammate just basically quit on the play at the exact same time and ch- kills any chance of getting it. So yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, it's one of those where it's like, what if lost plays? Because maybe who knows if they had scored, it, but it's also a bit of like hockey karma, right? Earlier in that game, with about what two fifteen left, Matthias Yanmark hits the post on in the empty yeah. So, so it kind of uh, last night the team that probably deserved to win deserved to win. And yep. I mean McDavid was incredible again last night. But we're talking we're talking other stuff today right now. It's, we yeah, were, it's a, it's a series, and uh, and that's a good yeah. thing for uh, for hockey fans. All right, Sean, why bunch of trades today in the NHL? Why today? Yeah. So. One of the things, there's kind of like a quiet, unspoken rule amongst NHL GMs and NHL teams to kind of respect the sanctity of the Stanley Cup. Like teams, the league doesn't like, the league wants the Stanley Cup to be its own tentpole event. They want it to be the biggest show in town. And that's fine when the Stanley Cup ends on June 15th, June 16th. When you have, this, essentially, when you have the Cup final potentially going all the way to June 24th, like it's going to, Teams are like the basically teams get to the point where it's like, I can't sit around and sit on my hands and wait anymore because if this Stanley cup final goes seven games, the Stanley cup will be awarded on next Monday. The draft is next Friday. Like there's, there's, there's 72 hours or whatever it is before teams have to. And so it's so, and we live in a salary cap world, even with the salary cap going up. And so July 1st is a huge day for a couple of various things. One, it's when a lot of no move clauses kick into play. The other is that's when a lot of signing bonuses are paid out too. So if you're going to, there are some, there are certain contracts and deals and everything that you have to get done before July 1st, if you're going to have any benefit as the team selling that asset. So the big one, Pierre-Luc Dubois gets traded from LA to Washington for Darcy Kemper. Dubois obviously was in Columbus, then he was in Winnipeg, then he gets traded to LA, former number three overall pick. Has it been a little bit of uh, all over the place? LA made the mistake. It was a terrible deal for them with Winnipeg. Look at all the pieces Winnipeg got, helped Winnipeg rebuild right away. Terrible deal. But the only way LA was getting out of this deal was if they got this done in basically, if if they basically got this done in the next 48 to 72 hours. Because there's a weird part of the CBA where if the Stanley Cup had gone seven games with how dates had gone, there wouldn't have been enough time to buy Dubois out at one third of his contract value. So there was that already. So the Stanley Cup final almost going seven games added to that factor. Then you add in the fact that on June 1st, Dubois, July 1st, Dubois gets a full no move clause. So he would have full control of his future. So if the Kings were ever going to get out of Dubois contract, it basically had to happen sometime today, tomorrow, by before, basically before Friday. That's why Dubois gets moved to, to, uh, to Washington. And Washington pulls the deal because they essentially, Kemper had a down year. They kind of like uh, Lindgren had taken over as the number one. They like the kid they've got in Hershey right now who's playing in the Calder Cup final. They're like, All right, we can take a try on this because 
or why not? And yeah. so that's why that deal happened. The other ones that start happening today too, Jacob Markstrom getting traded to the Devils. At some point, one of the goalie dominoes had to start. We all knew Markstrom was going to move at some point. Um, the And it's at some point, basically, once Calgary got the deal they wanted um, for Markstrom, and they got a first, and they got a young defenseman who they like. And I don't know – I don't really – truly sign off on everything Craig Conroy has done so far in Calgary. Like we look at the TANF trade. I don't think the return he got from Dallas was particularly great, but give Craig Conroy credit that he sticks to what he believes is valuable. And he believes that th- that ball comes in and replaces a, a Zadorov and, 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 and everything like that. So, and then the other one that was not a trade because we're not allowed to trade future considerations anymore in the NHL that changed about that changed in the most recent CBA. You can't do future consideration of trades anymore. So the Barclay Goudreau has a pretty good playoff run with the Rangers, but he's making a bit more money than he should be. Oh, three points. At, yeah. And essentially the Sharks, people have to remember the Sharks have first in the waiver order claim until November 15th, I believe. When you finish dead last in the league, you get first waiver claim order until November 15th. Is That's when it starts going off the daily standing. So well, I don't know if Chris Drury and Mike Greer had the official conversation that if we put him on waivers, you'll claim him, but I'm pretty sure that happened. And that's, and so that's, those, those are kind of, all of these moves are about cap movement, flexibility. So when teams go to the draft next week, they have the best chance to better their teams and potentially add before July 1st. Now, how does this involve the Dallas stars? Right. And I'll, I'll let you intro the trade so I can take a deep breath here since I've just been Start your summer road trip at Midas and get up to $30 off your next repair service. Plus, get a free closer look vehicle check to make sure you're road trip ready. So if you need a brake service, an alignment check, or tune-up, hit up Midas for up to $30 off. For more details, request your appointment at Midas.com. Yeah, no, absolutely. That that, that is a terrific (laughs) recap on what's been happening in the NHL today for Stars fans and Stars fans of note. The news came through that the Stars have sent Ty DeLandria. The Sharks weren't done. New GM Mike Greer, after his first year, picks up Ty DeLandria in return for a fourth-round pick. And I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, um, it's a move where in a non-cap world, Ty DeLandria is still a member of the Dallas Stars. That's just the reality of it. He's a guy, he's a good thir- He's a good depth forward. He's a good fourth liner. He's a good 13th forward. They like him a lot. Uh, Jay Gonger best friend his face is painted on his face is actually painted on jake ottinger's mask yep. with along with mason marchment and ty felliber who uh another guy who's no longer in the stars organization and essentially what it came down to is it wasn't ty delandry the player it was ty delandry as an rfa with a qualifying offer and i'll make sure of the number right with a qualifying offer of nine hundred forty-five thousand. it's probably gonna he's gonna be making close to a million dollars and when the stars are already on the hook for 2 million next year against the cap playing with a $2 million less cap next year, because of Joe Pavelski, you're trying to save and, and pinch pennies everywhere you can. So you can spend in the other places. So Ty Delandria making close to a million to be either a healthy scratch or play on the fourth line. That's a role that there's a lot of guys you can get for seven for 825,000. There's a lot of there's, you have, it's, it's there are lots of Ty Delandrias in the league. While you like having that guy as someone who's homegrown and, and knows everyone, it's time it becomes time to move the to move the money around to open it up. And that's really what this was. It was moving Ty Delandria out for the money reasons. Because and here's here's the calculus that Stars fans will like. Okay. Ty Delandria with Joe Pavelski effectively retiring or quote unquote, not playing this year, depending what terminology you want to use, but he's retiring. Um, the stars created an open roster spot for Maverick Bork with Ty Delandria gone. The stars now took the slot of money that Ty Delandria needed. And that now goes to Maverick Bork. If you look at the kind of you're figuring out your cap sheet that creates roughly two, two and a half million dollars of extra space that you can now use in your, as you try to figure out how do you resign maybe a Chris Tana, how do you bring a Matt Duchesne back? All of these little things build up to the bigger move. And at the end of the day, it's Ty Delandria, really good teammate, really, really good person. 
I think it's a great move for San Jose because they need to bring in some guys who are going to bring some competitiveness to, to that team. That's going to be starting to build around Celebrini and Will Smith and everything like that. Uh, really good move for San Jose for Dallas. It was essentially a, at some, you have to start moving other money around to open it up for the bigger move. And that's what this was. And a good move for Ty Delandria personally, man. I know he's going to yeah. miss this. Uh, teammates, but at the same time, from a career standpoint, I think this is an opportunity for him to get regular playing time and prove, you know, why the stars drafted him first um, in the well, first and, round. And the other thing about it too is it's it's a spot where he's going to an organization where they have the they have everything they know about title interest. So remember, the stars' assistant GM is Tom Holy, yep. who was head of stars PR um, for up until two up until last season no yeah when, when right when mike greer got the job it was tom 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 holy left to take the assistant agm job with san jose tom holy knows ty delandry better than almost anyone else in hockey he's gonna go basically so that's one of those where that move i couldn't help but look at that and think that there's a tom holy fingerprint on that of him and mike greer like hey when we're adding depth character guys as we try to take the next step here in san jose I believe that, that that's kind of part of it here. So it's, I, I know there's a lot of stars fans today that are kind of like, there's some frustration that he's like, that, that he's gone because, and, and it's, and it's easy to look at the, I, I think the biggest frustration is people will, will look at it and say like, Oh, he was a first round pick who got moved for a fourth round pick. And at the end of the day, you got 151 games out of him. Was he the first, was he, was he the first round pick that he probably could have been? Probably not from the production standpoint, but this is how you have to keep moving things forward as a franchise. You can't get overly attached to sentimentality because Ty DeLandry is the perfect example where a team could have been overattached to sentimental things. Jamie Benn and Mike Madano announced to the pick of Ty DeLandria in Dallas. Like if you ever, if you think about someone who there was a Dallas stars origin story where you're like, ah, we can't get rid of him because of how he arrived here. It's Ty Delandria. Jamie Ben, I remember Jamie Ben when when they announced the Ty Delandria pick. Jamie Ben said he'll never forget Ty Delandria's name because he read it like sixteen times on the piece of paper before him and, and Madonna announced it. So it's he's a part of Star's history, but now it's history, and that's kind of the end of the day for it. I think. Yeah, you know another name I want to throw out there too that this allows them to possibly bring him back. Sam Steele's also a restricted free agent. Oh yeah. John. Yeah, Sam Steele's restricted, and I think, and we can all agree. I mean, just call it what it is. Sam Steele was a better player this year. If Absolutely. you're going to pick, if you're going to pick one out of the, out of the other, same thing with Craig Smith. Now Craig Smith's a little bit older and yep. might demand a little bit more, but Craig Smith was a better player this year. So, yeah, I you're you have to sacrifices get made sometimes. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Probably a different podcast, but I did want to say, you know, if there are things that I look at and say, hmm. Because he didn't play all the time, I think my argument is no. But at the same time, I am kind of looking for that energy guy, that Yanni Gord. And I don't know if Ty Delandria could have been that guy. But at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Like a guy that's yeah. going to come in and kind of, you know, kind of rustle it up a little bit. Yeah, but you also don't want to run into the same spot where what happened with the other moves San Jose made today, where do you want to get to the spot where you're paying that guy no. $3.25 million? Do you no. want to be in the spot where you're stuck with the Radic Foxa contract? Like, I mean, Absolutely. I think one of the main reasons Radic Fox is still with Dallas is because it's impossible to unload that contract. Like Correct. that's, you kind of, you move on when you can sometimes. So, yeah, well, I think you explained it. Perfect. And uh, thank you for coming on and explaining it like you did and silly season will continue. And we'll talk yes. about, draft coming up and uh sean has some great perspectives on that and uh yeah we'll keep looking and if anything else happens you know spits and suds will pop on and uh giving you the latest but that is a kind of a capologist point of view from <laughs> sean that i think a lot of people aren't thinking about so when you think about the departure of ty delandria think about the arrival of maverick bork and yeah. you could also think of maybe the continuation of Sam Steele. So, Sean, what do you want to plug, my man? Yeah, um, we've got uh, – I'll do a quick uh, plug for the movie project. Go watch The Late Game. It's uh, the late you're, game. Looking yep. for, you're looking for a good hockey fix right now to watch. Uh, we have until Friday night before there's no Stanley Cup final game. So go watch The, the Late Game. Uh, i got to give a shout-out to my guys at EP Ringside for our draft guide course you've done a great job already plugging the sub stack for me as, as, as usual gavin i love it and uh we will 
you know what, this show too, just tell your friends about it because this is the type of stuff where trade happens. Gavin shoots me a message. Hey, you want to hop on for 10, 15 minutes and do it. And we do it. So tell other people about it because it's, it's been fun for us. Absolutely. That's going to do it for another edition of spits and suds. We will be back soon. I promise for Sean Shapiro. I'm Gavin Spittle. Have a great day, everyone. Mm -hmm.